Welcome to the first video here for Algebra 2. Um, this video is going to talk about the beginning of Lesson 1 of Module 1, which is on domain, range, and end behavior. Um, so the essential question for this section is, how can you determine the domain, range, and end behavior of a function? Now this video isn't going to answer that question. That's what we're going to do later on. This video is actually going to give you an introduction to an idea that you need to understand in order to successfully describe domain, range, and end behavior. And that is what's known as interval notation. How to represent an interval of values from a number line using special math notation. Okay, um, You should be following along with your textbook. Um, I'm going to be going through some of the example problems that are in the book, and then at the end I'm going to prompt you to do some practice problems of your own that we'll go over in class. Um, so this section starts on page 5 of your book, so please make sure you have your book out in front of you and are open to that page. If not, pause the video and get that in front of you and pick up so that you can start the lesson. Okay, so this is the major thrust of the video here. This is the ideas that we're going to be looking at right here on this slide. The uh, concept of this is how are we going to be able to represent an interval from a number line using math notation. So an interval is a part of a number line that doesn't have any breaks. So visually, you've seen this in Algebra 1. You know, something like this. Here's my number line. Maybe I start at 2, I stop at 5 and I want all the numbers in between 2 and 5. And notice that at 2 and 5, at the endpoints, I have a filled in dot, which you should have talked about in Algebra 1 means I'm also counting 2 as part of my interval and 5 as part of my interval. Okay. This would be considered a finite interval because it has two numbers at its endpoints, in this case the number 2 on the left and the number 5 on the right. Another type of interval can be an infinite interval. That one is unbounded at at least one end. So maybe I still start at two, but I go all the way out to bigger and bigger numbers. And I shade that arrow to say, I don't really stop. I'm unbounded on the right. This would be an example of an infinite interval. Okay. Another example of an infinite interval may be I start at 3, but instead of going to the right of 3, perhaps I go to the left of 3. I want everything smaller than 3. Notice that this time I have an open circle at 3, so I'm not including that 3 in my interval. Okay, So these are just some visual examples, some number line examples of intervals. We'll see more of these as we do some practice problems shortly. What I want to talk about now is this table that I am starring. This table can be found on page 5 of your book. I would definitely make note of it because it's important. It's going to be what's going to lead us into doing some of these example problems in a few minutes. There are several different types of intervals. There are several different ways to represent those intervals. Some should be familiar to you. Some will be brand new. The two that should be familiar to you are in these two columns that I am highlighting on the table. Inequalities and set notation. The third column, interval notation, that should be new. Okay, You may have talked about it in Algebra 1, but for most students, this is a new topic for Algebra 2. All right, so let's go through this table. So the first description is all real numbers from A to B, including A to B. Now, I know that looks confusing, but that's just a verbal description of the picture up here. All the numbers from 2 to 5, including 2 and 5. It's a finite interval. So the way we would represent this interval as an inequality is we would say 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5. Okay? If one or both of these circles weren't filled in, we wouldn't include one or both of the equal to bars, but we'd still write the inequality basically the same way. The less than symbols would still be pointed this direction. That's very important. Please take note of that. A lot of times students will mess up the way they write the inequality sign. If you go from smaller number to larger number like this, you're going to have less than signs. Okay. So the open side should be pointing to the right for each of these inequality signs. Now set notation is basically written exactly like an inequality, except you're going to use these braces to open and close the statement. 
and you're going to write this x with a vertical bar. This means it's the set of all x such that the inequality we wrote before is true. x is between 2 and 5, including 2 and 5. Okay, So they kind of go hand in hand. One is just a fancier way of writing the other. Now the new notation, interval notation, is a bigger shortcut. The way we do interval notation is it kind of looks like an ordered pair. The left end point we write first, so if we want to use that same example that I drew at the top of my slide, 2 would be written first, comma, the right end point, which would be 5. And then the key with interval notation, and you can kind of see it if you glance down this column, you see how sometimes there's these square brackets, sometimes there's parentheses. To know which to use, you have to determine whether or not the dot is filled in. If you include the endpoint, that's called a closed endpoint. Think of it like the dot is filled in, so it's closed. We use a bracket to represent a closed endpoint. Okay, either a left bracket if it's the left endpoint, or a right bracket if it's the right endpoint. If the endpoint is not filled in, we use a parentheses, it's open such as this 3 here in this number line that I'm pointing at with my pen. And again, we can either use the left parentheses if the left endpoint is open, or right parentheses if the right endpoint is open. Notice you can mix and match these. It all depends on what each endpoint is doing. All right, let's look at the next line. All real numbers greater than A. Okay, so that's basically this picture, except... I'm not going to include the 2. So we would say that x is greater than a, or x is greater than 2. We'd say the set of all x, such that x is greater than 2 with set notation. And then for our interval notation, the way we would write that is, again, we'd start with our left end point of 2. Since we technically don't have a number on the right, we shade the arrow, we use this symbol called positive infinity. And positive infinity just basically is saying... I'm going to bigger and bigger numbers without stopping. Now since the 2 is not included, we'll use a parentheses. And for infinity, we always use parentheses because you can't include infinity because infinity is not a number, it's just a direction. Okay. The last one would be, okay, all numbers less than or equal to a. So maybe if I took this number line and filled in the 3, this would be a number line that represents that description. As an inequality, we can express that number line as x is less than or equal to 3. In set notation, we would say the set of all x, such that x is less than or equal to 3. And then in interval notation, again, we work from left to right. The left end point is technically the arrow, but we can't really write arrow, so we use negative infinity to represent the left arrow. And then the right end point would be 3, so negative infinity to 3. We have to always use an open end for an infinity sign. But in this case, since the 3 is filled in, we will use a closed end point. Okay, so that's the, some of the intervals um, that you can write, and that's just some examples of it. Now let's just do some more practice. So I want to work through parts A and B, the bottom of page 5 and top of page 6 with you. All right, so if we look at the first interval, first thing we want to do when we want to write our inequality is we want to look at what the end values are. So it looks like this starts at negative 3, and it ends at 2. So that's how I always start my inequalities. Left end point, less than sign, x, less than sign, 2, right end point. Now I look and see are the circles filled in. Well, they are. So since they are filled in, it's not less than x, it's less than or equal to x. It's not less than 2, it's less than or equal to 2, because I can have the value of negative 3 and positive 2. Now for my set notation, I'm going to just write the exact same thing, except I'm going to include this new part, the braces and the set of x such that part. Interval notation, same thing. I'm going to write what's the beginnings of an ordered pair. 
my left end point of negative 3, my right end point of 2 with a comma in between. And then I have to decide, am I going to use open or closed brackets? Well, since negative 3 is filled in, I'm going to use a left bracket. And since positive 2 is filled in on the number line, I'm going to use a right bracket. Okay? Let's take a look at the one to the right here. It's the same region. We start at negative 3. We stop at positive 2. So we're going to set up kind of the beginnings of the inequality the same way we did on the left. Now we look at the endpoints. Is negative 3 filled in? No. So I'm not going to put a bar underneath that inequality symbol. 2 is filled in, so I am going to put a bar. And that's the proper inequality for that interval. Set notation, again, is just a fancy way to write this. So we do the brace, x such that, and then we just copy down this line. And then we close the brace. Interval notation, again, we'll start with writing the left endpoint, comma the right endpoint, and then we look at each endpoint and see is it open or closed. Now the big difference here is, again, because negative 3 is not filled in, we got to put a parenthesis here. However, the 2 is included, so we're going to put a closed. And that's important. You can mix and match open and closed um, endpoints. Okay. Part B now, we're going to look at some infinite intervals. So in this case, we have one of the arrows filled in, so we're going to use either a positive or a negative infinity. All right, let's start with the inequality. Okay. Now, since it's an infinite interval, we're not going to really have a double-sided inequality. We're not going to write down two numbers. We're just going to write down one number. So it looks from here that all the stuff is shaded to the left of 2, so x is going to be less than 2. Can x equal 2? Sure, so we'll put a bar. Set notation is just a fancy way to write that inequality, so it's now the set of x such that x is less than or equal to 2. Now for my interval notation, again, I want my left endpoint. My left endpoint is an arrow, so I'm going to use negative infinity as my left endpoint, comma my right endpoint, which is 2. And i got to figure out how am I going to enclose these two values. Well, since the left end is an infinite end, I have to use a parenthesis. But since the right end is filled in, I use a bracket. Okay? Let's look at the last one here. Now we're shading everything greater than 2. Do we include 2? No. So our set notation will now be the set of x, such that x is greater than 2. For interval notation, we start at 2. We go all the way out to the right. And in this case, right means positive infinity. We get bigger and bigger and bigger without stopping. Now to get our endpoints, 2 is going to be open because 2 is not filled in. And positive infinity is going to be open because infinity is not a number, it is a direction. Okay. So hopefully you filled these in and worked through these in the book with me um, to get an idea of how to write these number lines in the three different ways of writing sets. What I'd like you to do now on your own, this is where the video is going to stop. I want you to try the three reflection questions underneath the table on page six. Okay, See what you can do with those. We're going to discuss those in class. Then what I want you to do is go page through to page 12 at the end of this lesson. You'll see it says evaluate, homework, and practice. I want you to try questions one through four. Those are just some more examples of this concept. If you're stuck, try to rewatch re my examples, rewatch my explanation, look carefully again at the table on page five and the examples that we worked through to help you. Um, and if there's any other further questions, we'll discuss them in class. Thank you for watching this video, and we will pick up more on domain range and end behavior next time we see each other.